This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. Time for the Festival Italia, an exclusive Italian cars only event. Take to the track in luxurious Italian style. Yes, very nice. Um, we have three races here, Rome Circuit, Monza without the chicane, and Monaco. I think it's the first time we're visiting Monaco as well in the LP, and perhaps Monza? For sure Monza without the chicane, but anyways, we need an Italian car, and the Italian car I'm going to be using is... The 1971 Ferrari Dino 246 GT. This car is absolutely gorgeous, and... I don't know what color I want it in. Azzurro Dino. That's really nice. I like it in light blue. I mean, just look at that thing. That thing is a cutie. Now, I don't know if I'm the only one who actually likes the classic Ferraris more than the modern ones. Uh, probably not. It's probably a lot of people. But anyways, let's go to the first race at Rome Circuit. And Sports Softs are the tires we can use. 500 performance points or less. And that's the typical opponent list. Circuito di Roma. Although... It's Italian, not Spanish, so I'm probably messing up the pronunciation. But anyways, what do we have? 147 GTA leading. So we have a Stratos. We have a Mito. It's just your typical Alfa Romeos and Lancias and stuff. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sport hards are on by default. We're going to leave them on. They should be okay. So here we go. Listen to that thing. Oh, I, th I thought it was going to have like a cute horn like the Countach, but it sounds like a regular old horn. I'm going to have to get used to driving this car with... Oh, fuck. Kind of a weird overtake on the Alpha. Um, I'm going to have to get used to driving this car with its full power because I'm so used to driving this car in Gran Turismo Sport with... Um, Balance of performance turned on for the N100 class. And obviously with the BLP for that, like, the gears are kind of long for the amount of power that you have to reduce. So the car, while it is pretty OP for the N100 class, it feels really sluggish compared to, like, the Stratos or the Roadster Touring car. It's actually a good car to use in that class if, um, if you have, like, a wide open circuit, I think. But of course, the Roadster and the Stratos are like the kings of N100 when it comes to FIA racing. Of course, I know because of always using the Stratos when it comes to N100 races and people will look at me weird considering they all use Roadster TCs. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. Yeah, definitely not used to driving this thing. Yeah, I, I knew the Sport Hards would be enough. Like, we're already four seconds behind. The Stratos is now leading. I think the Stratos was what? Third? That's how bad my memory is at the moment. Like, I was just on the screen that showed the starting list, and I I completely forgot where, where the Stratos was. All I remember is that the GTA was on pole. snap over steer than I'm used to. Again, because I'm used to this car being BOP for N100. That's the only time I've ever really used the Dino in any Gran Turismo game. This is my first time driving this car in GT6. Not counting any, like... I think there's, like, a mission, I think? B license? I, I can't remember. Already caught the Stratos. 
Hey, this kind of reminds me of um, that one battle that I had with um, one of my buddies, Ben. He goes by Mayall1 on PSN. But we had a battle in N100, BOP'd this car and the Stratos at Sakuba. Good times. Anyways, final lap, and we're already in the lead. I wonder how late I can break. 75 meter mark? Maybe a little bit later than that, but that was not bad. We're already leaving the Stratos behind. Poor Stratos. Ooh, I missed the gear. Just two more corners to go. Ooh, not bad. And there we go. All done with uh, the race at Rome. Quite easy. I think the Dino might be a bit OP, but screw it. I mean, it's an excuse for me to drive this car. Oh, I remember now. Goodwood. One of the one of the um, challenges at Goodwood was with the Dino. So let me save the replay for this race because I want a side by side shot with the Stratos, and let's move on to race number two. All right, race number two at Monza, and it's roughly the same fuel as last time. Yeah, I think I was right about that um, Stratos being in third. And oh boy, we have an we have an Auto Bianchi A112 A Barth in the field. He's gonna get left behind. Oh, but there's a Fiat 500 SS Lounge ahead of us. Okay, yeah, there's going to be a fight between the two of them. Although my money's on the A112 because that thing is so cute. Look at it. That's a cute little box. So, yes, bypassing the chicane because it's the no chicane layout of Monza. Which just means that in an online race, the second chicane would be even worse. Took it easy on the brakes because I did not want to risk overshooting the corner. But yeah, I, I remember watching the. Um, th this is being filmed after the FIA Gran Turismo um, Nations Cup EMEA finals, and I'm surprised that the that the organizers decided to go with Group One here with the no chicane layout and the racing was a lot cleaner than I expected it to be. Then again, you know, it, it is, it is a world tour event with having to have some of the best drivers and, you know, in the world essentially. But, you know, sometimes the race combos can be really dumb. Like I think it was Sardinia a with the Jaguar, uh, the Jaguar VGT. If I'm not mistaken, it was one of the Sardinia road courses, and yeah, that combo was so dumb. The race basically became a, a wreck fest. Oh my god, they're three wide heading into Parabolica. I'm going to follow the Stratos. Oh. The GT moving under braking. The TCG strap. You know, I might, actually, I might actually have to save the replay for this race in particular if I win. The 2x2 two two shot might be cool. Do I have any damage? Uh, I have a little nick. Okay. Yeah, I knew I had to lift in the into the first corner. I knew I had to lift. The Stratos is going all over the place. He's pretty much breaking in the corner. He's parking in the corner, I mean. A 
Of course, he had the break for the corner, but yeah. I mean, he was actually really slow through there. I'm actually kind of surprised there's no other Dino in the field. I figured the Dino would have made an appearance, but... So far, nope. It's kind of another reason why I bought this car. I mean, like, yeah, I could have gone with... Like an Alpha or something, but... Again, for those who know, only premium cars for me and... A rare occasion of a standard that has a functioning interior. Like that Prowler that I used before. The long fifth gear. Wonder what the top speed on this car is. Fortunately, we'll never be able to reach it with all the corners, but... But yeah, it's all good. And just one more lap to go. Oh, that's right. That's right, I keep forgetting. Here's the, here's the actual start, uh, the finish line for um, GT6. GT Sport has it over at the, the F1 finish line back there. Where the pit wall the, the pit wall is, the entry. Looks like it could reach maybe about 160. Okay, why am I hugging the inside so much? That was terrible. A little bit of a corner cut, but I mean look at the lead we have. Doesn't really make a difference at this point. Yeah, I can't even see the Stratos. I just saw him exiting the second Lesmo. Let's see here. Can we see him? Uh, I think that was him that just entered the corner. I don't know. Hard to see. He's way too far behind to actually make any difference of the uh, in the results here. And there we go, race number two complete. Only got one more race to go. Oh, the A112 finished ahead of the 500 lounge, nice. Very cool. Back up to 10,600,000 because this car was actually quite expensive. I may just save the replay for every race from now on. Anyways, race number three. So race number three taking place here at Monaco, and we finally have a third. Actually, well, if you don't count the, the Abarth um, from the last race, we actually have four classic cars here. Now we have a Julia GTA and that one weird bat car thing that was worth like a million five hundred thousand credits or however, however much it's worth. And we have an old school 500 in the back. Nice. Too bad those boys are going to be lefted behind. Lefted behind. English 101. Yeah, the Abarth 1500 bat, whatever that thing is. Now, three laps around Monaco. This should be the easiest of the three races because we should be able to get the lead by, I don't know, End of lap one. 
Although we have a neighbor 500 in the field this time, which is nice. Car was fun to drive at the sea at a time rally. Ooh, a bit of wheel spin coming out the hairpin. That was a pretty cool overtake. The Stratos isn't taking the lead yet. Oh, I spoke too soon. Damn, that Delta was really slow through the chicane. We're already hunting down the GTA and the Stratos. Is he going to smack the swimming pool section? No, he's not. That's right. This is in Gran Turismo 3. Every AI car smacks the swimming pool. They exit the swimming pool section in that game. Okay, we're not going to take the lead by lap one. But... We're at least on his ass now. Only 2.3 behind. Okay, bad T1. Hit the wall, but it doesn't matter. Did his nose dive a bit? under braking? I couldn't tell. That was a bit of a dumb move on my end to try to overtake there, but now we got a clean overtake then. Way too soon on the throttle. Kind of the problem now is that, like, I'm not playing this with headphones, so the volume's really low, and I kind of rely on audio quite a bit in order to tell me when to get back on the throttle, which sounds kind of silly, but I don't know, that's just kind of the way my brain operates. So when I don't have that information, it's kind of hard for me to actually see what exactly I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter, we're already leading. So now that we're here, it, it does make me kind of sad, actually. Well, not really. It makes me really sad with the entire pandemic going on that the Gran Turismo World Tour essentially is just online only because although it doesn't make a difference where the events are held for from a viewer standpoint because, like, since it's a video game, essentially, you know, it, the product is going to be exactly the same. Like, regardless if you do it online, you're going to have the same level of competition, you know, with, like, the actual racing and stuff. It's not like a real-world motorsport like Formula One where a pandemic can actually affect the calendar and stuff. And, you know, you end up having to go somewhere like Mugello instead of Coda, for example. But, wait. Oh, that's the Fiat 500. Not a surprise. The slow boy. Um... Although, it, although having everything online doesn't really affect the product itself of the competition, it's the glamourness of having the world tour at places like Tokyo or like Salzburg, you know, the Red Bull Hangar, or New York, Monaco in this case, and just driving the streets of Monaco right now in GT6, like, it just made me think about the fact that, like, a lot of the top players, friends of mine now, that, like, they go here for for the world final or they went here for the past two years and like because of covid like oh fuck because of covid they can't we can't host any events like that which that sucks but i'm pretty sure you know we'll be back soon maybe 21 hopefully we'll have a world final at monaco again Also, no Monaco Grand Prix in 2020 sucked. Like, sure, the racing isn't amazing at Monaco, but it's still the glamour. It's still, like, the crown jewel aspect of it. It's still a special race to watch for that, for the sake of it being a crown jewel. 
Anyway, speaking about crowning, we just crowned ourselves the champions of the Italian festival by winning the final round here at Monaco. So Julia sadly did not actually gain any spots. He just kind of stayed where he was. So 10,620,000 credits in total. And we got a trophy called Trailblazer. Unfortunately, since I'm not using an actual PS3 peripheral, I can't press the PS button to see what Trailblazer is. But as we got one event down, we only have a few more for the National A License section, and we are now at 35% of the game completion. So, thank you very much for watching this episode of Gran Turismo 6. Next time in the LP, we're going to be taking a look at the European Hot Hatch series.